I don't know about you, but I am grateful. I am grateful. And we should be grateful too. Allow me the privilege of God to speak to your people. Let us down in the deep treasure of your word. We stand in need of another touch from you. Touch these lips of clay. Speak today and give clarity to your word and allow this word to be life changing today. According to your will, to your way. This message is very special. Acts chapter 2, Acts chapter 2. As I mentioned earlier today, across the world, Christians are celebrating Pentecost Sunday. Acts chapter 2 comes after St. John. Acts chapter 2 comes after Acts 1. <laughs> but for clarity, I will have to give some backdrops of chapter one. Amen, amen. But for the sake of time, I'll read chapter two. Thank you. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, pay strict attention, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all that were, they were in the house city. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire. Yes, sir. It sat upon each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. I wrestled with this church. I wrestled with it. As the Spirit gave utterance. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews devout men out of every nation under the heaven. Look, verse 4, they spake with other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. But verse 5, the latter clause said, men out of every nation under the heaven, meaning people were there from everywhere. And I'll expound on that. That's my message. And when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. They were from everywhere. And they heard speaking their language, yeah. and they recognized it. Yeah. Yeah. And the only way they could do it, because they had been endowed. They had been overshadowed by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost breathed upon them. Yeah. 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 
ask a question, what is your evidence? And, 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 and let me say to you that this message may not go the way you think. Thank you, ushers, but I have to do what I feel Christ has compelled me to do. Across the world today is known as Pentecost Sunday. Today we open up our hearts and acknowledge the person, the power, the presence of the Holy Spirit. Might I say the atmosphere in worship, in charismatic worship, is not the only way to identify the Holy Spirit. Meaning just because a person jump up and down doesn't mean that they are filled with the Holy Ghost. Let me say it this way. Sunday morning worship isn't the only way to identify if one has or is filled with the Holy Spirit. That's right. That's right. But we want to identify if people have been filled with the Holy Spirit follow them home. Amen. Because uh, evident that they've been filled, they will not just live on Sunday morning, but it's a daily walk. And when people are filled with the Holy Spirit and when you have to pastor them, they're easier to pastor when they have been filled with the Holy Spirit. They don't have guards up against leadership because whereas I may have doubt about the decision, I can't doubt the deity. And so with that being stated, beloved, how you live after the benediction is a sign that you have been filled with the Holy Spirit. Every born again believer is filled with the Holy Spirit the minute you say yes to Jesus. Acts 2 records the birthday of the church. When the Holy Spirit descended upon the believers in the upper room, it also records the growth process of the infant church. The church was birthed this day. On the day of Pentecost, about 3,000 believed the gospel, repented of their sins, and were baptized as followers of Christ Jesus. The second chapter of Acts marks a turning point in the history of God's kingdom. In fact, a new phase of his redemptive plan unfolds in Acts chapter 2 as the church is being birthed. See, in Acts chapter 1, the disciples were to wait for the coming of the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 2, he comes. In Acts chapter 1, the disciples were equipped, but in Acts chapter 2, they are empowered. In chapter 1, they were held back. In chapter 2, they were sent out. In chapter 1, the Savior ascended, but in chapter 2, the Spirit Descended. The promises of the Lord is given in chapter 1, verse 5 and 8. But it come to fulfillment as believers gathered in the upper room 
received the wonderful promise of the Father. You remember when Jesus was getting ready to leave his disciples. And when he was getting ready to leave them, he said, if I don't go, the comforter cannot come. In John, he said that. And, and, and one of them, I think it was Thomas, who said to Jesus as he was leaving, he said, Jesus, where are you going? Jesus said, I'm going to my father's house. And I'm going to prepare a place. And he's saying, I'm going to prepare a place for you. The you is, I'm going to prepare a place for prepared people. Because of the sin curse that is upon humanity, all men suffer vanity. Every man will have to see Jesus in judgment. And after we are judged, we will be afforded the privilege to be with Jesus in our earthly, in our heavenly, I'm sorry, dwelling place. Yeah. Meaning, this world is not our home. Yeah. Meaning, that if you want to see Jesus, you've got to accept him as Lord. Yeah. And now after he has ascended, the Holy Spirit has now descended. And the Holy Spirit lives in us. And when we want to do wrong, and even when we do wrong, we are convicted because we are saved. And the Holy Spirit holds us captive of what we should and should do. Passage, this passage described, as I just told you, the birth of the church by the coming of the Spirit on the day of Pentecost. It was on the day of Pentecost that God's sovereign uh, timetable called for the Spirit to descend. The Spirit was not induced into coming because the believers prayed. And I know some say that they tarried yeah. or met certain spiritual requirements, but that's not scripture. Right. Luke's account points out only the sovereign timing of God All right. as caused of the Spirit's descent. Mm. Yes, sir. All right. Well, let me put it this way. It was the presence and power of God coming upon believers, gifting and equipping them to proclaim the glorious message of salvation to men. Because verse 1, God's providence. Verse 1, man's obedience. Verse 1, the spirit of being together in unity. Verse 2, verse 3, verse 4, the spirit is in filling. Yeah. Yeah. See, without the Holy Spirit, you're empty. Right. That's why some people are never content. So spirit, they are never satisfied. That's right. That's right. Because the Holy Spirit doesn't live in them. Here's a question. What does Pentecost mean? You won't know that, don't you? Pentecost means 50. It refers to the Jewish feast held 50 days after the second day of the Passover. That's what Pentecost means. Now, here's your other question. What does the day of Pentecost mean? That's what you just asked. The day of Pentecost, according to Acts 1 and 3, Jesus was with them for 40 days, then ascended back to heaven. Right? After he rose, he remained 40 days. 
ascended back to heaven. Ten days after the ascension and 50 days after the resurrection, the words of the prophets were fulfilled. In Joel chapter 2 and verse 28 and 29, the prophet Joel prophesied. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It shall come to pass uh, afterward mm -hmm. that I will pour out my spirit uh -huh. upon all flesh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So here's what's happening. The prophecy of joy mm -hmm. is coming to pass in the New Testament yeah, yeah. because the Old Testament concealed yeah. and the New Testament revealed. Yeah. The prophecy saying that the Holy Spirit would come. Yeah. The Holy Spirit was prophesied to come because Jesus was prophesied to come and leave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But God wrapped himself in the flesh of man and that's where Jesus come from. But it was also prophesied in Isaiah before Jesus ever went to Calvary that he was wounded by transgression. They were all one. 
Keep on run nothing at their job. Come on now. Come on. Don't run nothing at home. Can't even make their nappy head child clean up the room. But want to get to church and run the preacher and run everything else. Is Christ divided? And then some of you got to watch who you hook up with. Your friends with the wrong thought. Your friend go to a church where the members run it. And then you'll get to your church and think your church is wrong because it seems like Carrie Bell's church is right. Yeah. But if the Holy Spirit is not indwelling in that place, I don't know how prosperous it may seem. If the Spirit is not resting upon the leadership, Christ will not dwell in the midst of that assembly. Yeah. 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 The Bible says there is a way that seems right unto man, but there is that way that destruction. Two rows. That's a broad row. Everybody in that row. Do what I want to tie like I want to when I get ready. Wear what I want to short as I want to. Drink like I want to. Do what the hell I want to when I want to do it. That's a broad row. Because people have the knowledge to say, I'm grown. I can do what the world I want to do. I got my own house. I got my own car. I got my own this. I can do what I want to do. Can't nobody tell me what to do. But that road going to lead you straight to hell. But there's a narrow road. And the Bible says every now and then there's a traveler. But thank God the end of that road will see They were with one accord. And the word accord means they had one mind. I vowed I've gone through enough stuff with deacons fighting preacher. I did all that before. Now we'll go back down that road. Not having those issues. God knows we're not. We're not having them. Thank God for those deacons. Give them a hand. Yeah. But let me tell you this. You got to be on one with yes. one accord. Yes. The Holy Spirit will not reside where there is no order. Amen. Yeah. Holy Spirit will not reside where there is no unity. Yes. Yeah. When we say we need another Pentecost, mm, we really mean we need a repeat of what was performed. All right. Because we cannot duplicate Pentecost. But we can ask God to breathe on us. See, we, we, we cannot go to, the, to Jerusalem and enter that upper room and wait to be filled with the Spirit, we can't do it. You know why? Because the Holy Ghost has already come. In fact, the Holy Spirit has already come and baptized every believer who confess Christ as Lord, according to 1 Corinthians 12, verse 13. Why, we cannot duplicate the events of that day. We can duplicate the conditions that existed among the people of God on that day. Yes. Meaning we can be in one place. Tell somebody we can be in one place. And I really want to start crying because when I look at the condition of, of the church, I'm not just talking about one church, but I'm talking about so many preachers and church people that I get a chance to communicate with. And I ask myself often, is God really pleased? Because whenever you have people that shout off a sound, but never move by substance, your church got a problem. You, 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 you got a problem. 
And the reason why some folks don't move on Sunday because they don't pick up their Bible on Monday or Tuesday. And, 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 so, and so, so when the Holy Spirit is in you, he arrests you to want to learn more of him. And the only way you're going to learn more of him, you got to read his word because faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Sisters and brothers, unity was called the calling call. It was the calling call of the early church. And it should mark us as well. If we want to experience the power of God, then we got to learn how to walk together in unity. Chapter 1 and chapter 2, verse both tells us how they were united. They were united in purpose. Yes. They were united in prayer. Yes. They were united in power. Uh -huh. right. And they were united in performance. That's right. They were united in purpose. Chapter 1, verse 4 and 5. They waited on the Lord together. Oh, yeah. You know why we ought to do stuff together? You know why we ought to be at Sunday school together? Yes, sir. Bible class together? Yes. Choir rehearsal together? Prayer meeting together? Yes. Sunday morning worship together? And not just pick what Sunday we want to be together, but we ought to be together because we are a team. And I don't know much about sports. I'm learning. Yeah. But I do know that if you're going to play the game, you can't have half of the team in Mexico and the other half in New York City. I got that much. The team got to be together. The quarterback can't be in the bleachers. And the running back can't be at the concession stand. And the linebacker can't be in the parking lot. I got that much sense. Everybody got to be on the field. consensus is reached, we should break out of our huddle and stand together. When that consensus is reached, you make the call. Here is what the Lord is leading us to do. And whereas you may not understand if you pray God to open up your ears in spiritual ways so that you can understand. And some things we don't understand now. But we will understand yeah. in the by and by. Yeah. Oh, I don't understand how a black cow can eat green grass and give white milk and yellow butter. I don't understand. Yeah. Neither do I understand how he dipped my black soul yeah. in his red blood and I came out white as snow and I got a song that the angels Saying, redeemed, I've been bought. Yeah. They were united in purpose. Mm -hmm. And they were united in prayer. Yeah. They prayed together. Yes, they, did. they prayed with yes. and for one another. Yes, sir. If you want to build unity in a church, start caring one another's burden. Yes. It doesn't do me well to see you suffer. No, sir. Galatians 6 says that if a person is overtaken in a fault, yes. ye with the spiritual, go and restore such a one in the spirit of meekness. Yes. You're not filled with the spirit and you enjoy seeing somebody else struggle. You may not be able to do much, but what little bit you can do, do it in the name of Jesus. And when you do it, don't talk about it. But to do it in secret, the Lord will reward you in the whole point. They were united in prayer and they were united in power. Because Luke says that it was suddenly. He said it was suddenly. Emphasize the element of surprise. They were all 
filled with the Holy Spirit. They were all right for God. They preached the same message according to verse 11. They believed the same things according to verse 41 through 44. So they were united in power and then they were united in performance. They were all filled his, I'm done now. And they began to speak. You see it, don't you? They were all filled and with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with what? Other tongues. Now here's the part I got to get you. Other tongues. There are those who believe that the only way to identify us as Christian is speaking in tongues. Mm-hmm. What happened in Acts 2 mm-hmm. has not happened since Acts 2. So let me clear that up. What has happened in Acts 2 hasn't happened since Action. Yeah. Wait, get say, get this pass. So no. The tongues in Acts 2 uh-huh. are not the tongues Paul speaks about in 1 Corinthians chapter 14. When he speaks about them being out of order, 1 Corinthians 14, he said, Y'all just round here blabbering. Right. And you are our. So, 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 in fact, the tongues of Acts 2 are not the tongue Paul speaks about when he writes Romans chapter 8. In Acts 2, when the Holy Spirit came upon them, they spake with other tongues, which means they spake in other languages. So much so that in Acts 2, verse 6 through 11, 6 and 11, people said, We are hearing. People speak in our language. And we understand. Galileans who have not been trained speak in other languages in which they weren't trained to speak. It's like you speaking Spanish and French or German and you've never had a class in the language. were there from every nation. Uh-huh. Yeah. And as they were there, they began to speak in other languages uh-huh. that the people who heard it understood and said, they speak in my language. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Not the no, no, they were speaking in a language that they may have not understood, but somebody understood. <laughs> Are you with me? Yes, sir. Somebody, am I boring? No, sir. Am I teaching you? Yes, sir. The question is this. Why does the Holy Spirit... Well, see, I've had, I've, I've had people get upset with me because I have certain things that I question. I have certain things I like and don't like. I don't like women in church with pants. But if that's all you have, yeah. <clears throat> then God ain't gonna condemn you to hell. That's that's right. Right. But I said that's what I like. That's right. And if you're under this ministry, you ought to honor what I like. That's right. All right. That's right. I've had a problem with people 
telling folk, speak in your heavenly language. And everybody just get to saying stuff. And I'm the only one that ain't feeling that. Because they did speak, but they spoke. And as they spoke, somebody from every nation did understand. Not like I don't understand. Because I never understood a preacher getting up or a worship leader getting up. Oh, speak your heavenly language. What is true? Nothing. According to this text, Acts 2, he said they spoke with other languages. It's in the Bible, you see. And as they begin to speak, somebody said, Are they drunk? Baptizing them in the name of the Holy Ghost. Yes, 
the primary purpose of the Holy Spirit being in your life is to call others to get to know the Christ of the cross. The Bible said, when they, yes, when they began to speak, the Bible said those who were on the outside, that's what the text says, were attracted in great multitude to see what was going on on the inside. See, when you are filled with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost ought to make you do more than jump. Holy Ghost ought to make you do more than shout. Holy Ghost ought to make you do more than wear long skirts and no lipstick and no makeup. Put on your lipstick. Put on your mascara. Put on your makeup. Put on your eyebrows, but don't put them on too thick like the girl I saw the other day in the restaurant. But do whatever you do in modesty. That doesn't take away from the fact that you have been filled with the Holy Spirit. Because when they were under the gifting of the Holy Spirit, their lives attracted lovers. I'm closing, but if you never speak about Jesus, that evidence that you have not been filled with the Holy Spirit. If you never show somebody that you are a child of God, that's evidence that you have not been filled with the Holy Spirit. If you always frowning down on people who don't have what you have, that's evidence that you had been filled with the Holy Spirit. If you walk around with your nose in the air, that's a sign that you had been filled with the Holy Spirit. But when you've been filled with the Holy Spirit, you go down the Dexter Park and find a homeless person and you say, whatever I've done to the least of these years, I've done it also under you. I don't know about you, but when you've been filled, you find yourself saying, if I can help somebody as I travel along, if I can help somebody with a word or song, if I can do my duty as a Christian author, then my living shall not be in vain. Let me close when I tell you all. I didn't come to hoot this morning, but I feel the Holy Ghost power coming on me as a rushing mighty wind. Let me close when I tell you I've been watched.
Father, just send me the work I've done. Yes. Speak for me. Yes. See, when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you want others to be filled. Yes. Holy Spirit does more than make you jerk. Because sometimes ain't nothing to your jerk. Because no sense in jerking and you are a jerk. When you've been filled, that's a real evidence. Treat people different. When you're in field, you look at things from a different perspective. When you're in field, you know that your trial is only a test. When you've been field, when you've been field, you want others to come into the family of Christ just as you did. So you evangelize to people everywhere you go. You want your family saved. You want your children saved. You want them in church. When you've been filled. Evidence that uh, some people haven't been filled is the way they act. But when you've been filled, there's a yearning and there's a desire. Yes. Will you come today? Will you accept Christ into your life?